My name is Gregory Cote. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at Indiana University School of Medicine, and I'm excited to present to you the results of our paper being published in Gastroenterology, Similar Efficacies of Biliary with or without pancreatic sphincterotomy in the treatment of idiopathic recurrent acute pancreatitis. More than 200,000 Americans each year are hospitalized with acute pancreatitis. Up to 30% of cases of recurrent acute pancreatitis remain idiopathic after a workup. There is significant debate as to the role of ERCP with sphincter manometry for the prognostic as well as therapeutic impact on patients who have recurring episodes of acute pancreatitis. The significance of pancreatic sphincter dysfunction as either a cause or effect of recurrent acute pancreatitis is poorly understood. So the rationale for our study was threefold. First, to evaluate the incremental benefit of dual sphincterotomy, pancreatic plus biliary sphincterotomy, versus biliary sphincterotomy alone in patients with pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction. Second, to evaluate the incremental benefit of biliary sphincterotomy empirically in patients with normal sphincter manometry of the pancreatic sphincter versus a sham arm. Last, we sought to evaluate the prognostic significance of pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction in predicting the likelihood of developing future episodes of acute pancreatitis. To accomplish this, we conducted a randomized clinical trial with prolonged follow-up of patients with idiopathic recurrent acute pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis was defined using standard criteria. In addition, the treating physician deemed the patient to have idiopathic as in no clear etiology for these recurring episodes, and an ERCP with sphincter manometry was planned. Patients were excluded if a discrete cause of their pancreatitis was identified at the time of ERCP, or if pancreatic sphincter manometry could not be performed for technical reasons. We also excluded patients who had identification of chronic pancreatitis at the time of ERCP. The study began in 1997, and enrollment occurred over a 14-year period. The randomization was stratified based on the findings of the pancreatic sphincter. If pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction was identified, defined as a basal sphincter pressure greater than 40 millimeters of mercury, patients were randomized to either biliary sphincterotomy alone or dual sphincterotomy. If patients had normal pancreatic sphincter manometry, they were randomized to sham therapy or biliary sphincterotomy alone. The primary outcome was the development of one episode of acute pancreatitis. Patients were followed for a median of 78 months. To be included in this analysis, patients were included with a minimum of one year of follow-up. The Kaplan-Meier curves highlight the results in terms of the incidence of acute pancreatitis during follow-up. You can see that the incidence is significantly higher in both groups who were found to have pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction. The incidence in those randomized to biliary sphincterotomy was 48.9% as compared to 47.2% in those randomized to dual sphincterotomy. Patients with normal pancreatic sphincter manometry, the incidence of acute pancreatitis was only 11% in those randomized to sham versus 27.3% in those randomized to biliary sphincterotomy. Because of the striking observation on the Kaplan-Meier curves showing a significantly higher rate of recurrent pancreatitis episodes among those with pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction, we conducted a post hoc analysis to evaluate for factors which predicted having pancreatitis during follow-up. This is shown in the following table. As you can see, pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction after adjustment for confounders was associated with a fourfold greater risk of having pancreatitis during follow-up compared to those with normal sphincter manometry. In addition, having a greater number of acute pancreatitis episodes before the initial randomization, the development of chronic pancreatitis during follow-up, and having post-ERCP pancreatitis following the initial ERCP were also significant independent predictors. In conclusion, in patients with prolonged follow-up, pancreatic sphincterotomy plus biliary sphincterotomy did not eliminate the likelihood of having a future acute pancreatitis episode 
more than patients who underwent biliary sphincterotomy alone. There are two potential explanations for this. First, was the endoscopic pancreatic sphincterotomy incomplete? The second potential explanation is that pancreatic sphincterovotic dysfunction is not, in fact, a cause for acute pancreatitis, but a marker of a more aggressive phenotype. This is suggested by our observation that pancreatic sphincterovotic dysfunction was associated with a fourfold greater risk of having acute pancreatitis during follow-up. The second interesting observation is that 17% of patients were found to develop chronic pancreatitis during follow-up. In fact, the rate may be higher than, that, than what we are reporting since patients did not undergo formal testing for chronic pancreatitis unless they had persistent episodes. I'd like to thank my co-investigators, particularly Dr. Stuart Sherman and to Suzette Schmidt.